Hey everybody, welcome into a Flyers game preview. I'm Kevin Durso. Tonight, the Flyers take on the Buffalo Sabres at 7 p.m. Before getting started, this video is brought to you as part of Flyers coverage on sportstalkphilly.com and the YWT podcast. Get all of your Flyers coverage at sportstalkphilly.com. Follow me on Twitter at Kevin underscore Durso and find more coverage from me over at 97.3 ESPN.com. And be sure to listen and subscribe to the YWT Podcast. Let's get right into it. Tonight, the Flyers take on the Buffalo Sabres. And this matchup really couldn't come at a better time for the Flyers. A rough weekend playing the third game in a three-game series against Pittsburgh, falling in that one 4-3, to three, a game that, as it went to the third period, appeared winnable. And unfortunately for them, the tank seemed to be empty at that point, so... Unfortunate for them, they needed to find a way there and they weren't able to do it. Then they come back on Sunday against Washington, have a really strong first period, get the lead. And then as the second period wore on, Washington kind of just wore them down and took the game into their control. And finally, it all came together for them as they scored twice in the last five minutes of the period. They get another goal five, just under five minutes into the third period. And that really put the game away. It felt like the game was over right at that moment. So... That's where the Flyers are. It's a one in three week, and that's not very good when you consider how short the season is. You have to have a quick, uh, quick reset and get right back into the win column as soon as possible. This is a good opportunity because the Sabers come into this game on a seven game losing streak. They're going to come in without their top player in Jack Eichel. He's out with an injury. They're dealing with goaltending issues because. Lena Solmark is injured, so they they have guys who don't have a lot of experience coming into play. That all comes and factors in, and it's really, really just going to be a game that the Flyers need to have. There's really no excuses at this point. You've had the day off the ice to kind of refresh and recharge the batteries a little bit, refill the tank, and not only do you have big games coming up because you've got the games with Washington, you've got the Islanders on the schedule next week uh, in the future as well, but you really have to buckle down and find a way to beat teams like this. And when their top players out of the lineup, when they're going to a third-string goalie to play in in net, you need to figure out a way to win. And, and not only that, but it felt like a bit of a letdown on Sunday when they played at home with fans. The first period was great. They seemed energized. They seemed like they were trying to play hard for the fans in attendance. And then it all fell apart. So now you have the opportunity to really deliver on that and to show the fans uh, the type of team you can be. And I I get it. It's going to, you know, if it looks really good, it's going to be, well, it's Buffalo. But... These are the ones you have to win. These are the games that you need to take in order to be at the top of the standings or in the playoff picture when the season is over. You have to beat the teams that are below you. And this is a really good time for this to come through for the Flyers. So let's get into some of the other details of the game. And we'll start with the goalie matchup for the night. And it starts with Carter Hart and goal for the Flyers. Not really a big surprise here that Carter Hart's going to be the guy in net as he... Uh, comes in and kind of gets a chance to build on that successful start he had against Buffalo a week ago. He had the shutout. It seemed like it came at the right time. He's been in goal a couple of times for some unfortunate games, I would say. You know, the game on Tuesday wasn't completely his fault. He kind of got left out to dry in that one. And same thing with the Sunday game. Even though there's goals that you probably sit there and say, oh, he'd like that back, It the whole picture is not his fault. And it's unfortunate that he's not able to string together starts to bring the numbers back to a reflection of what they really are because he's played better than the numbers showed. Has he played as well as he can? No, but he's played better than his numbers look, and it doesn't show right now. That's kind of where this team needs to be, and it's where you want to see this team go as as things get better. You want to see Carter Hart go that direction as well. And, and during the first two periods of that game on Sunday, he looked really sharp, and he looked like he was going to give the Flyers what they might have needed, which was the ability to sit on that one goal and not, not allow anything. And, of course, that didn't last through that late second, early third period, but he was solid throughout the game, and that's a good sign moving forward. On the other side, Jonas Johansson for the Sabres, and this is the third string goalie. This is a guy who has very little experience. You see the four games played. Two of them have come against the Flyers. Ironically, he came on in relief in the third period of a game in January in Philadelphia that uh, he did allow one goal in that one uh, before the game was out of reach and the Sabres weren't able to come back. That was a 3 nothing win for the Flyers. And then again, last Sunday, when the Flyers closed out that weekend sweep in Buffalo, it was Johansson in goal for that one as well, and he allowed the three goals, uh, and he dropped to 0-3-0. Uh, but still, 
you know, a guy who is trying to find his place with this team. It's an opportunity. He could be very motivated. He certainly, in that first game in Philadelphia, had a strong showing. And he and let's go this way. The last time he played against the Flyers actually getting the start, he made 35 saves. The Flyers took 38 shots. So he had a very successful day, all things considered. And it's something for him to build on. And he knows this by now. He kind of knows what to expect from the Flyers a little bit. So he's going to be prepared. And you have to take advantage of the fact that you might be able to get him out of position more than some of the other guys that you see around the division. So that's something to keep in mind. Let's go to the players to watch for the Flyers. I have Claude Giroux. And mainly I picked Claude Giroux for this game because of the fact that these are the games when you need your captain to be at his best. You need the captain to lead the way. And it doesn't always have to be in terms of scoring or point production, but play with the mentality and the energy that's needed, especially against this team. You need to be as effective as possible. You need to find a way to win this game, and you need Claude Giroux to really be one of your best guys to make it happen. On the other side, Sam Reinhart for Buffalo. It's hard to pick a player to watch for a team that's struggling as much as Buffalo is, and realistically, Jack Eichel would have probably been the guy here because if it's going to happen, it needs to start with Jack Eichel. He's really got to be in the middle of all the success they have. Reinhardt's going to get a big opportunity here because, first of all, he's the team's leading scorer, so they do lean on him a lot for offensive production, and he's had success earlier in the season against the Flyers. He had a two-goal game in Philadelphia that was part of that 6-1 win for Buffalo just three games into the Flyers' season. But Reinhardt's going to play on the top line and not only play on the top line, but play kind of a hybrid role. He's going to play winger. He has the ability to take faceoffs. They're going to kind of utilize him in both areas. So I want to see what he has, and I'm kind of interested to see how the Flyers try to match him up and match up that line. Obviously, for the last couple of games, the Flyers have been dealing with top lines that are much more difficult to contain. You think about trying to contain Sidney Crosby or Alex Ovechkin and trying to make sure you get the right matchups. Make sure Sean Couturier is on the ice when you want him to be. This could be a little bit different, so you want to make sure that you just have these guys marked as best as you can, but I think there's guys beyond the top line for the Flyers that can contain them. So that's really what matters. So let's see how they contain this group. Make sure you don't let Reinhardt start getting these great quality scoring chances and find a way to win this game because that's really what's important coming down the stretch. So that's going to do it for the Flyers game preview. And be sure to check back after the game today. Uh, Kyle will have a post-game video for you. I'll be back with another preview video ahead of Thursday's game against the Washington Capitals. Until then, you can catch up with the latest episode of the YWT podcast you can listen to it on all of the podcasting platforms, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Actually, Spotify, we're working through a situation with Spotify where the most recent episodes are not showing up. The show is still available on Spotify, though, but the most recent episodes aren't showing. But beside the point, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, you can subscribe on YouTube and watch all of our episodes, all of our game previews, all of our recaps. During the game tonight, I'll have coverage at Kevin underscore Durso on Twitter. Game updates are over at Flyerdelphia on Twitter. You can check out the game preview and game recap and five takeaways over at sportstalkphilly.com and 973espn.com following the game. With that, enjoy the game, everyone. We'll see you next time on the next Flyers game preview.